Hey guys, welcome to a special video. Vipic7 here. Uh, never done this before. We're doing like a slideshow sort of uh, sort of uh, presentation, talking about the new hero uh, that's been announced uh, on the Korean uh, Korean videos, uh, Alencia. So apparently she is a Luna and Yu fiends aunt or aunt depends on where you, depends on where you are in the world you might pronounce the different people are laughing at me saying that it's aunt um but uh, she seems to be pretty good and i'm not over hyping this the reason why i'm making this video is because i think she's like she's absolutely too good it seems like too good to be true so we'll, we'll have to see what kind of uh uh, HP scaling mods and uh, attack mods she'll get. Otherwise, we do have a lot of info on her already. Um, but I think I'm only waiting for the mods. But in terms of like the kit, it's very robust. So let's go through this this presentation. So these are uh, screenshots from the from the Korean video introducing uh, Alencia. And uh, so yeah, you will see some Korean in there. I do not read Korean. I'm gonna give a shout out to a couple people on the on the stream, Shaiko and uh, Memento. Uh, and some others are helping me on the Korean translation. So I prepared this kind of deck for you guys, so you guys can see this. So a couple things to know that uh, she is an Earth Elemental, of course, as you can see there on the icon. She's a warrior and she's a Cancer. So originally I was thinking that, oh, she's Ken, but I forgot Ken is a Capricorn. But we recently do have one, Apocalypse Ravi is a Cancer warrior. So if you, you know, if you look at the uh, Look at people's like Apocalypse Ravi builds. You can roughly see uh, what sort of stats you can you can get with uh, Alencia here. Uh, so 7,000 base health. So it's a bit lower than uh, Capricorn counterparts, but the defense is very high, 652, and the attack is not bad, 975 for a Bruiser type warrior. That's a very good start. There is no effectiveness. There is no innate effect resistance. No uh, innate uh, critical hit chance. So that, that could, depending on how you build her, depending on what her mods are, what her role will specifically be, um, that could be sort of hard. But, you know, like for Apocalypse Ravi, now that she even get a, getting a developer's buff, 30% extra crit rate, so it makes Apocalypse Ravi really easy to build. Will that be the case for Alencia here? We'll, we'll have to see. Um, the imprints, as you guys can see there, um, again, thanks to the guys on stream for helping me translate that. Uh, defense for the release okay so the imprint release is a two slot top and bottom triple s you get a 12.9 percent defense um increase for those two slots so that's pretty good but the 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 meaty portion of course is the hp i really like that uh 18 self hp for the imprint concentration so i mean if 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 people want to go for the triple s here i think i think there's no better one especially for a non-limited hero to get her on a triple s um that hp is going to be fundamentally like like for her entire kit it's going to be great so like i said she is actually a, a health or um hp scaling bruiser so uh it's noted that all of her skills s1 s2 s3 are scaling on health um uh, well again we'll have to see the the kind of split between the attack based mods versus the health based mods like what's higher so what's given higher priority so for example like uh fire ken has a higher technically technically higher uh health uh scaling throughout all of his entire kit versus like apocalypse ravi which has more attack scaling but apocalypse ravi needs health as well to heal more etc etc um so it's it's going to be interesting to see uh what her mod split will be um i'm hoping that she is lower in the attack so people can really build her just focus on health if you're going for damage um i think she's going to be great support and uh but people will still build her as a bruiser for damage that, that will be always the end game um sort of uh, build anyway especially with the uh, world arena coming um i think she's going to be useful here is uh, first things first is the S3. So in the video itself, they did present this uh, from the S3 first, and then the S1, and then the S2. Um, uh, rightly so, because I think usually the S3 is the the biggest one uh, to talk about. So this one's quite a packed skill, as you can see from my 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 <laughs> rough translations. There uh, acquires three souls. Um, that's amazing. Uh, three soul um, acquire on a on a skill like from from kind of like a damage dealer support uh is great like we know that um like assyria for example 
gather souls like mad because she could acquire two souls on the S2 and then three souls on the S3. Um, or was it the other way around? Anyway, she gets five souls after her like one turn pretty much, one one round. So for her to get a three soul here it is, is very, very surprising to see, uh, especially for me. Five turn cooldown. Um, but if you look at the Mola distribution, we do have a one turn cooldown on the plus three there. Uh, it's pretty it's pretty average for a, a plus five skill. Um, but uh, it uh, is an AoE attack, so it does damage, and then it dispels all buffs from your enemies, all buffs. Okay, so that's that's already really crazy, and then increases allies' defense for two turns. So AoE defense buff for two turns, including yourself, of course. So it helps her survivability. So it's going to be in, in, insanely good. Just the S3 itself, dispel all buff, and then uh, the two turn defense buff. It's just crazy, and it's an attack. So it's a cleave cleaving skill. So that's gonna be crazy. Uh, and then we get to more complicated stuff. We go to the S1. So here, uh, again, I tried to do my best to make it like a note form and break down the, the fundamentals of the skills. So it requires one soul, so it's pretty typical for an S1. 60% uh, chance to defense break for one turn. It's a single target attack. But here's here's the kicker. Um, the soul burn is only 10 souls, so it's not that much, but it's 100% defense break so 100% proc rate uh it's not a ignore effect resistance so for newer players don't get those two things confused 100% defense break but for two turns on the soul burn a 10 soul soul burn is very very cheap um so i really like that uh that's very very usable uh in my opinion depending on the fight you may want to spam that um if you get a 100% defense break and you can land it and for two turns um, it's almost better than a 10 soul, soul soul burn to increase damage for most of the heroes But of course it is it is situational depending on the comp you're fighting and the comp you bring to the table But I just like that aspect. It's a 10 soul soul burn is very cheap and uh, for two turn defense break hundred uh, percent The mola distribution is uh, you get a 15% uh, effect chance and uh, you also get 30% uh, damage. Actually, that's one thing I, I forgot to note. Uh, back to this one. Um, there is um, a 30% damage on the S3 too. Uh, S1, S2, and S3, all the damage, uh, raw damage you get from the Mola is 30%. So I, I think she might be one of those heroes that may be worth plus 15, like plus 15 uh, Mola or skill enhance. I think it, uh, she might be one of those. Because um, I, I think all of her skills are great, and I'll explain the S2 in a bit. Um, so up to a 75% defense break. So when I was reading the 60%, that's not including the Molagora. So we have uh, another 15%. 75% defense break, very, very high. So, you know, if you get lucky, you may not even need the Soul Burn. But like I said, I like the Soul Burn aspect where, you know, if you're, if you're in a crucial moment and you need to make a decisive factor who you want to take out and you want to guarantee the kill, most likely getting a defense break on any character um, will will kill them in the one shot on your on your follow up for your DPS. Um, even if she doesn't kill, maybe she can. Maybe you have a lot of damage, right? So, um, anyways, so that's that's the S one S one. This is the S two. So this is a bit complicated. Um, but I'll try to make it as as uh, oops oops sorry. This is this is not there. That should not be there. That's a my bad. It does not acquire any souls. S2 is a passive skill. It's a passive skill. It has a 25% chance to proc Mind Eye. So it's a it's a it's like kind of like a Ken's Vigor. Um, kind of like um, what's it called? The Fire Corvus is uh, it, like most most of these warriors have some kind of like weird undispellable passive. Um, but basically that's it. Uh, if you mola it up to the plus four, you get an additional. 25% uh, chance, so it's a 50% chance to, to proc it. Once it is proc though, um, you get a 30% uh, effectiveness boost and a 30% effect resistance boost, and it cannot be dispelled. However, if you, if you see in my note here, I, I wrote unbuffable prevents with a question mark. Um, the reason is because I, I realized that when Ken gets an unbuffable, and I don't know if it's a bug or if it's meant to be, but when Ken gets an unbuffable, um, in the past, I got unbuffable by Basar. I just got unlucky, and I couldn't. When I did the vigor, he actually didn't get the buff. Um, so I'm not quite sure. I'm assuming if it's not a bug, it will work the same. So if you land an unbuffable on her, 
um, even if you proc Mind's Eye, you're not going to get the effects. But I'm just, I'm, I, that's, so that's a side thing. No need to dive deeper into that speculation. But otherwise, if you do grant it, it is not dispellable. So that's, that's fantastic. Um, there's no mention on a turn count on the Mind's Eye proc though. I just realized that myself. I, I didn't notice that before. So like for Vigor, the Vigor buff is for turn. But I don't know if she has that too. Cause if it's granted throughout the entire fight, that's 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 really that's really too OP in my opinion. Um, another is you see the mola distribution again, another 30% damage. Oh it's three turns? Oh okay, thank you, thank you. So Shiaiko was just on stream just told me it's three turns. Oh okay, okay, I see. For herself buff. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. That's uh Oh it says it, right? No, it doesn't say it. Not not there, at least. I think it was probably in the video. I didn't take a look at it. Oh, it's my it's one turn. Oh, sorry, because there is a one. Sorry, yes, yes, there is a one in the actual Korean uh uh translation there. I can see it right there, yeah. After the 25% proc rate, it's it's one turn. Okay. So that's not as OP. Um, but the other other side of her passive is if mine eye if mine's eye is activated, I guess on the following turn, the S1 will do a follow up uh, called Trample, and it reduces the S3 cooldown by one turn. So that's very good because like realistically, I think what would happen would be like if you did the S1, you got a defense break and you have mine's eye proc'd. Um, and does trample, it's gonna do a ton of damage. Again, looking at the raw damage on the Molagora, it's 30% as well. So um, other the only the only the only you know caveat would be that um, the mod for the S2, like the trample follow-up is a low damage. We'll have to see, but usually like I said, if you get a defense break, it's almost the end for that character who has the defense break landed on. So it's still gonna be good, I think. Um and then, so yeah, this is this is the animation of the S2. So if you guys haven't checked out the video, definitely check it out. It's really cool. It's kind of like a Dragon Ball Dragon Ball Z kind of thing. Yes, I have my uh, I have my emote there because it does look really cool. Um, yeah, so like she kicks them up in the air and then does like a like a like a zoom like really quick backflip down, which is cool. Uh, and yes, you can see there in the subtitles uh, captured from the video, decrease the cooldown of Genesis, that's the S3, by one turn. So even though Genesis, the S3, has 5 turn cooldown, Mola is 4 turn cooldown, if you get Mind's Eye and the 50% proc rate is pretty high, uh, you can reduce that even further. And it's, so it's like, you know, you can keep, you can keep buffs off your enemies, um, you can continue to get the defense buff up, which is just fantastic. Defense buffs are so good. Um, and then and then do an AOE attack. So again, depending on her mods, I think it's going to be the, the difference there. And then uh, just to just to solidify this, because the S the S two this icon was like a skill. It wasn't a passive one where it has the indent on the side. I just wanted to circle this just to to make sure that yes, for her S two it is a passive, but it does grant those you know all those different effects, which is just like mind boggling. <clears throat> so. I'm gonna end this, uh, but my sum up for this, um, you know, in terms of like artifacts, again, I think we'll have to see uh, what kind of what kind of build people want to focus on. Uh, you know, if you if you got her on a counter set, I, I'm just thinking in terms of like Apocalypse Robbie. If you got her on a counter set, she's just gonna be, you know, getting those defense breaks up. But I think a speed set would be really really good place to start. In terms of artifacts, I think Draco Plate would be great. Especially if you want her to stay alive and do more damage. So Draco Plate, I mean, I mean, looking back right now, I think Draco Plate is still one of those really salty limited artifacts that they they didn't give a pity for that one, but it's gonna be really good. I think Durando will be good. Strat Gauntlet would be good if you wanna, you know, keep her available or not uh, pin down, so to speak. In terms of, uh, you know, you might not be able to get first turn because her speed is actually pretty slow. Um, but like 200 speed, like 200. 10 speed is the fastest a rob you have ever seen uh but it's like almost unusable uh, you, you're losing too many uh substat rolls into other stuff because she needs effectiveness as well so um if you're going to use her well she needs effectiveness like pretty high um in terms of uh get the the d spell of the buffs the uh, defense breaks i would say like she needs about like 50 to 60 percent um if you want to use her well i mean otherwise you're gonna run into problems with people 
uh, opposing running strat gauntlet or have high effect resistance and she's not going to do much in that case she will be she won't be super super great um but uh because she doesn't have any effectiveness uh awakenings either so i think um uh yeah that's that's my thoughts on it for for now for now uh, in terms of, I think, artifacts, like I said, uh, Durandal, Strat Gauntlet, a lot of warrior artifacts would be good on her. I think Hellcutter won't be necessary on her, but to me, I think my top choices would be Durandal uh, to get more turns, uh, Draco Plate for survivability and more damage, and, uh, and Strat Gauntlet for the effect resistance. Don't think I would use anything else off the top of my head. Um, yeah, you want to use really a lot of the damage ones. Maybe Portrait? If you want to cleave, maybe I I don't know, um, but I, again, that's my thoughts on it. it. When she is released, though, I I really do think that her her self imprint is good. So I I may may or may not pull for multiples of her, uh, maybe like three or something. Like every bit will help. Uh, seven thousand, I mean seven thousand uh, HP is uh, very very high. So uh, any imprint on a seven thousand HP would scale like quite nicely. I think. Jagan, do what I will do. Wait, what do you mean? What are you gonna do? Will with me, brother. All right, S4, you get that last last bit for the video recording. So I'm gonna end this here. That's my thoughts on uh, um, Alencia. So very, very, very cool. Um, I think the the previous uh, RGB hero that actually got me really excited was Lilius, and I think uh, all the ones like released like since Charles. Uh, that's not limited, not counting limited heroes. Uh, since Charles, I don't think I've been as excited. Um, but Alencia, I think I think she's really good uh, so far from my uh, understanding of it. Anyways, well we'll see when the data mine drops. Anyways, I'm gonna end this for the video recording sake. If you guys have Discord, check out the Discord server. Follow me on Twitter and subscribe to YouTube if you haven't. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time.